Every website needs to have privacy policy, cookie policy, terms and condition policy. These are legal requirements when you are collecting personal information, such as people's email addresses, when you're accepting payments. And even if people just visit your website, you are inherently going to be collecting some form of information because of how things work on the back end with technology these days. So these policies are pretty much mandatory for every single website. And in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of actually getting those things created. Now, I am wanting to be very clear. I'm not a lawyer or a legal advisor or any such qualified person. I'm simply going to be sharing how I got mine done. And I used a website called websitepolicies.com where you answer a bunch of questions in a questionnaire. And then based on those answers, you're going to be able to have the policy given to you so you can put it on your website for your own protection and legal requirements and so on. So I'm going to share with you the tool that I use to do that. And I'm going to share my screen and show you the process of when I created that particular website policies process. So once I've done that, I am then going to show you how to also get this set up in a software called system.io. Now, below this video, you are going to see chapters. So in case you already have your privacy policy, cookie policy, any of those policies already ready to go, then you could just skip straight to the system IO section. And if you are a system or a customer and you don't have those policies ready to go, then we do watch the video and go through the process of what I'm showing you how to do so you can get those policies ready. So I'm going to go ahead, share my screen, show you website policies.com. And then after that, I'm going to walk you through setting it up in system. I've already created the cookie policy. So what I'll do is I'll show you a demo of creating the privacy policy. So basically you click this, okay. Cause I've already bought it. So I already bought it. It says, looks like you did not complete the questionnaire. So then you click on get started. Okay. And then you select where you're locate, located. So I'm going to choose that. So I'm in Australia. Uh, I'm in uh, Western Australia. It will be used for a website. The URL of the website is arambakai.com. What is the name of the website? Arambakai. Next, you see there's the progress bar here. Um, is your, do you operate your company, your website under company name? Yes. What is the name of the company? Bukai Enterprises. Okay. Uh, you could say no if it's not, you know, everybody's different. Um, can users sign and create account on your website? Yes, you can sign up for an account. Um, they will be in the future, so I'll just say yes. I collect email, name, phone number, because sometimes they also opt in for information. So I'll just, I'll just do that as well. Uh, credit card information. Yes. Billing address. Yes. Not really bank information. Um, yes. They have full access. Uh, I'm just going to do that because in the future they might do that. So I'll, I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Do you market to children under 13? No. Can users publish anything on your website, articles, comments, images? Um, yes, they can. Share content available on your website on social networks. Yes, they can. Do you sell products and services on your website? Yes, we sell products and services on the website. Do you offer third-party products and services? Yes, because that's affiliate programs. Do you share user information with these third parties? Um, yes, I'm just going to say yes, because with some affiliate programs, maybe I am sharing information. So I'll just do it that way. How do you process payments? User can pay via remote third party. I don't actually have a user on the website. So no, I don't have that. So that's an external third party. Okay, next. Yes, I use cookies. It won't affect if they stop using it. Yeah. Does your app respond to do not track signals? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Okay, next. Yes, it has affiliate links. Does it have ads? Google ads, buy, sell, no, it doesn't. Do you send email newsletters to your users? Yes. Do you use third party email service? Yes. Can users easily unsubscribe? Yes, they can. Do you collect users from remarketing? So this is important, like Google or Facebook Pixel, stuff like that. So yes, I do. Uh, next. In things like this, you honestly probably want to put the more, the more clauses, the better, then you're, you're better off give, saying more than less. Um, yes, GDPR. Uh, GDPR is just a European um, privacy policy. So you want to say yes to that for sure. What kind of responsive action we take with it if you have data breach? Um, notify via email. Yeah. Will you disclose user information? I'm just going to say this via email. Will you disclose user information to law enforcement if you put a lawful request? Um, yeah, of 
there's a legal reason, of course. We show information in the event of business sale. Uh, yep, yeah, in case there's a business sale, yep. Yeah. How will you notify users of this policy? Updates, update the modifications, date, yep. Yeah. Good, create my privacy policy. And there you go, it's been created for me, okay? So there's a few things you could do. You could embed it straight in. You can take the plain text. What I do in my case, I just take this right here, scroll all the way down. Oops, let's go scroll all the way up, copy. So now that you have the privacy policy, cookie policy, terms, conditions, refund policy, affiliate disclosure, any of those information, you are going to want to set it up in system IO. Now there are two places you can do it on, and I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each and which one I recommend. So option number one is to hover over websites, click on blog. And once you are in the blog, you will put it under pages right here cookie policy earning disclaimer affiliate disclosure terms conditions privacy policy etc i'm going to show you an example of how to do exactly that and i'm just going to use the cookie policy version so now i've got a blank page right here and i'm going to paste the text right here the headline call this cookie policy and then right under it i'm going to put this text element now i'm going to click right here and then I'm going to scroll down on the left, click on alignment. And now I'm going to go back right here to the cookie policy. And I'm going to just copy all of this. I pretend that this is actually an accurate cookie policy. It's just a, a draft that, I, that was made for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to paste it in like so. Then you're going to actually just go through the process of just making it so it's a little bit more readable. So you will just click into it and click on enter, click into the next line, click on enter, next line, enter, next line, enter, next line, enter, and so on and so forth. And just make sure you do all of that just so it's a little bit more easier to read as well. So now that this is all finished, you could do a couple of things. You can click on section and make it white so it's a little bit more easier to read. Then you're going to click on save changes. Now you're going to exit. Now this page, the cookie policy is now done and you're going to repeat the same process and do it on individual pages in your system IO account on the blog section. So I'm going to assume that this is all complete. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go to blog layout and you can see that it says edit elements that are displayed on all blog pages and posts. Meaning when you are going to edit what's here, every single post and every single page on your website is going to have those elements and this typically is what you're going to have with your header and the footer so now in the footer you could see how there is a menu like so and what you're going to do is you're going to click on privacy policy you're going to click on either custom url and put this right here or you can do the blog link so you'll go like so and search it and that's what i would recommend that would be a more safer way to do it and you're going to open in a new window terms and conditions again blog link you're going to search for terms and conditions open in a new window earning disclaimers again blog link earning disclaimer like so affiliate disclosure blog link affiliate disclosure and then you will do the cookie policy the same thing so blog link cookie policy the one we created like so let me just delete the cookie policy so you could see the process if i wanted to do it from scratch so you're going to basically add a new item you're going to type cookie policy then you're going to choose blog link you're going to select you're going to do a little search cookie until you find it open in a new tab and click on save now, in case you don't even have a menu yet, when you are creating a blog, then you will basically go to the elements. You're going to scroll down and you're going to click and drag a menu like so. And then you're going to click into it and then you're going to make it center. You will make it so you can space things like so. So there's a bit more space. The font, I recommend usually make it small font. You don't need a big font and so on and so forth. So this is a different uh, type of a tutorial, but you get the idea. This is the menu feature. There is a tutorial on my channel on how to use the menu feature. Now, one last thing I will mention for mobile optimization as well. You definitely want to make sure that it's mobile optimized, meaning when you click on this icon, you're going to scroll down, you're going to click on the menu, make sure you choose drop down menu. So when it opens, you can see that it opens to the bottom and not to the side. So if you were to do 
side menu, then, and you will click on open, you'll see it will appear here. Not a good user experience. Make a drop down menu like so. All right. So now you're going to go back to desktop and now we're going to click on save changes. So now every single blog post we're going to create, every single page we're going to create in this particular website is going to have that footer with all the correct policies in place. And if you wanted to test that, you can simply right click here, click on view. And then when you scroll down, now this page is not actually done. So this footer is obviously very high, but otherwise it will be at the bottom if there was a bunch of content here. When you click on cookie policy, it will open a new tab and so on and so forth. So now that this is all done, we have to now take care of creating the same footer inside a funnel. Because when you are creating a funnel, like so, click on funnels and you're going to go to any of the funnels that you've created, like this one that I was working on, you need to add a footer which has those links. And unfortunately, the way system I always set up, the blog footer is only going to appear on blog. It's not going to appear on sales funnels. So how do you create a footer for sales funnels? That's the next phase I'm going to show you. So I am in the funnel that I was creating and you're going to see this is the page or the website that I was creating, the cookie policy, any disclaimer, field disclosure, etc. Again, these are just demos. So now I'm going to go in here. Now, if you look at my squeeze page, I already have the policies on the opt-in page. However, I left the thank you page without the footer. So I am already have my footer and I can actually drag it in and do it all, but I want to show you how to create it from scratch. Now you can just click on section and it will appear right here. Then you're going to drag a menu like so. You're going to click into the menu. I recommend you make it aligned so it's center. Then you are going to do as much as possible and this is 100. The font, you can make the font 12. Then you're going to scroll up to the top and you're going to go to your options here. So you're going to click on cookie policy, see cookie policy. You click on copy URL. You're going to go back to the funnel. You're going to type in cookie policy. You're going to paste in the URL. You're going to click on open in a new window. Next, you're going to go back again, earning disclaimer. Let's just pick that. We're going to go back here, type in earning disclaimer. Paste it in, open it in a new window. Go back again. We're going to grab the affiliate disclosure. Go back here, add new affiliate disclosure. Paste it in, open new window, add an item. Now we're going to add the terms and conditions. We're going to grab the link. Here it is. We're going to click on this copy button. We're going to go back and here it is. Open it in a new window. Now that we've done all of that, you're going to see we've got it all down here. Now, there is a couple of options you should be aware of. You can actually put two rows like so, and then you're going to make this thing really spaced out like that. You're going to then drag the menu right here. And then when you have this option, you're going to make this one so it's center and this one is center. And this is something that you could do to basically add like a logo if you want to do something like that. So I'm just going to add my logo just for demonstration purposes. Here we go. Click on insert. We're going to make this much, much smaller. And then in case I want to space it out even more, I could do it like so. Now, a couple other things you can do on the menu item as well. You can make it so the menu item text color is actually different. Right now it's red. I'm going to make it black. I can make it so when I hover over it, it's going to change color. So that's I'm going to change it to blue. And I can make a little underline so it becomes blue as well. Now I'm going to click on save changes and I'm going to click on preview and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see when I hover over it, you will see this blue thing basically. Okay. So that's how you set it up. Now you're going to want to have the same footer for multiple pages across the board. So the way you're going to do that, what I would recommend you do is you're going to click on section. You're going to also click on margins. You're going to make it very high. So it's very, very spaced out. And then you're going to click on the section and you're going to click on this save button. Now, what I would recommend is you were to type in footer section master block, and then you're going to click right here. Now I'm just going to call this demo only. So I don't actually use it, but I am just showing you. Then I'm going to click on create. 
Now that I've got this footer the way I want it, and by the way, there's something that I didn't do, like I didn't optimize it for mobile. So you can see here, it says side menu. You want it to be drop down menu. So when it opens, it actually opens down basically. So let's just see. Yeah, that's good. I can even make, make it a little bit more spaced out. So let's make it 10 like so, and let's make it 12 as well. Okay, so that's good. So now that I'm happy with the mobile and everything, here's what's gonna happen. When I'm going to now go to another website, let's just say I'm creating an order form so order form demo i'm going to click on type and i'm going to click on order form now i'm going to click on save i'm going to pick a template doesn't really matter which one just for demonstration purposes i'm going to click on edit page now at the bottom you could see that there's this footer right here now this is wrong one so how do i not have to recreate it again I'm going to delete what's here. I'm going to go to blocks and then you will have two options that will appear on the left. Option number one is master blocks. If you have any master blocks saved, which in my case I do because I just created one. Option number two is blocks. Now I'm going to click on master blocks. You can see here footer that I created. I'm going to click it one time and it will appear exactly the way it's supposed to be. And then it's going to be perfectly the way I want it to be. Now, here's the thing. If I also now make changes to this master block, let's just say, I'm like, you know what? I don't need an earning disclaimer. I'm just going to delete it. Now I'm going to need something else. Let's just say I'm like, okay, I actually forgot the privacy policy. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to click on add new menu item, privacy policy. I'm going to paste in the link, open a new window, click on save changes. Now notice that I've just changed it on this one page. So I've got cookie policy, affiliate disclosure, terms, conditions, privacy policy. I already, I also had earning disclaimer, but now I deleted it. So now if I was to now exit this editor and I'm going to go back to the thank you page that I had, you're going to see automatically that this is changed as well in that one too. Even though I didn't edit it, it also edited it here as well. So you gotta be very careful about that, but that is what the master block is for. It's one of the reasons this is a really good use case and it's only applicable for when you're using the privacy policy cookie policy in the funnels. Now, at the beginning of this video, I also mentioned that I will show you how to create the privacy policy, cookie policy and legal and all those pages under funnels. So I will show you that, but I'm, I do not advise it. And I'll tell you exactly why. Number one, you're going to need it on your website anyway. So you might as well use it and have it in the footer the way I showed you in this tutorial. Secondly, if you are on the free plan or if you are on the media plan, unless you're on the unlimited plan, there is only so many pages you can actually have. Whereas with the blog feature, you can have as many pages as you want. So this is one reason why I don't recommend to do that. In case you did want to do it, then you would click on add new step. You would click on choose a page and then you will see here info page. I'm going to call this privacy policy like so click on save. And now you're actually going to see that there's a bunch of templates you can actually use as well. But again, this is not um, going to replace the process of actually creating your own privacy policy and stuff like that. This is just template. But the point is that it's going to still be there. But again, I don't recommend it because it's actually just going to take space from you as part of your limits for your system IO account. If you're on the unlimited plan, it really doesn't matter. But if you're on the earlier plans, then it does matter. And you don't want to use up those pages, those valuable pages for this when you can have unlimited under blogs. Now that the pages is done, there is one small task with System.io you do also want to make sure you do. And that is when you go to settings, so you hover over your profile picture, click on settings. Once you're in settings, click on payment settings. And then you're going to see right here that you have a section to put your terms and conditions. So this is going to automatically appear on order forms as a pop-up. So that is something you do want to update. So just update the content here. Just copy and paste what you have in the terms and conditions and put it so it's matching the exact same way. And with that, all the steps are now complete. So that's about it. That's your A to Z tutorial for creating the privacy policy, cookie policy, terms and conditions, affiliate disclosure, all those things. I will mention you do need to have an affiliate disclosure for your website if you are doing any sort of affiliate marketing, which I do recommend you do. And if you wanted to get an affiliate disclosure type template, then you can just join my affiliate marketer roadmap course and check it out because i will include a template for that in that course that course is 100 percent free for you to check out you can go to affiliate startup community.com to learn more about it 
That's about it. Really appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. To go to actually create these policies, go to a run dot link forward slash website policies. I will leave the link in the description. Check it out and go through the process of creating your privacy policy, cookie policy, and all of that. That particular link is an affiliate link. I may get compensated for a small little commission. You just need to be aware of that. It doesn't change the price and it's going to help you make this a lot faster. That's about it. Really appreciate you. Speak to you soon. Cheers.